<clears throat> All right, I'm pretty excited about this video. I'm going to do a size 10 uh, Euro Nymph Golden Stone. Uh, this is a pattern I, I sat down at the desk and I kind of came up with it myself. When I post it online and talk about it, I don't claim to have invented it or anything. I, I think nowadays in fly tying, pretty much everything's been done. So, you know, this isn't exactly, you know, something really, really original. But in my world, it's something I sat down and created. Um, and as far as performance goes, I, I, I am in awe at the amount of fish I've caught on this. It's been my primary fly this entire season. Um, so I'm really excited to share this. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to start off with this Gamagatsu J20B in size 10. Uh, it's a barbless jig hook uh, for the beads. We're going with a 3.5 millimeter stones and then nested in there. I've got another bead that's countersunk with some 0.2 lead free wire in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by just kind of securing everything with our thread. We'll get a couple of wraps there. We'll go back up the other way, get into all these grooves of the lead, lock all that in there, and just get all that secure. So I'm going to kind of go through, you know, my thought process for every aspect of why I did this fly the way I did. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to lay down a thread base here and a little bit of a thicker thread base too so I'm going to go right back over my last wrap and I want to try to keep this as uniform as I possibly can so we're going to go back up fill in all that I'm going to put a couple of wraps right at the base of that bead just to make sure that all of that is secured and then one more smooth base wrap all the way down now the reason why I'm tripling up my base wrap is if you look at stone flies they don't really have the same tail profile as a mayfly nymph uh, they've got a little bit of a wider body and their tails really kind of just stick straight off the back end uh, so it looks a little bit different than a mayfly so I like a little bit of a wider profile on my body so that the biots kind of stick straight out so what I use for all of my nymphs <clears throat> I pull off my own biots off of a duck quill. Um, I don't use goose biots. I, I do use turkey biots, but really only for bodies. Uh, for tails, I, I, I really don't know why the goose biots are as popular as they are. These, these duck biots are, are really, really, you get so many more of the appropriate size for the size nymphs we're tying. Um, I stopped using goose biots a long time ago, and it's all duck biots for me. And I will also be honest about the fact that I'm not particularly good at tying them in. I know a lot of people tie them in both at the same time. I've tried that for years and years and years, and I, I cannot nail it. So I've always done them this way, one at a time. And I'm going to go all the way up and secure them instead of cutting this off because I can build a little bulk. I'm going to fold them back over and get all that secured down onto the shank like that. Next thing that I'm going to tie in, I've got this vinyl ribbing and it's going to be in brown size midge. And the reason why I went with size midge, even though this is a size 10 fly, is, is pretty, pretty specific. When you are tying Euro flies, I see a lot of them on the internet and I see a lot of bushy material. And I'm not saying that it won't work, it, it certainly will, um, but when you're tying Euro flies, you, you really want your body, your profile, your everything to be a little bit tighter than you would normally tie it. Uh, you know, you see a lot of the Pertigan nymphs that people tie, and the reason why those are as appealing as they are is because of that, that really, really sleek body, uh, especially the one that you create with the resin. Um, it makes it so that when you drop it in the water, there's there's no resistance with the water and it just plummets. Uh, if you were to take a nymph not attached to your line and just drop it in the water, it, it's going to immediately plummet to the bottom. So the reason why you're getting slower sinking uh, is because of the material and the line and all of the stuff that creates resistance with the water. So what you want with a Euro nymph is you want it to be as sleek as it possibly can be. Uh, without a lot of bushy material kind of, you know, floating out there. And that's really what we're shooting for here. And while I'm saying that, 
I'm putting my dubbing onto my thread and I'm doing it very, very lightly. I'll show you what I'm putting on each time I, every time I make a twist, I don't know if you could even see that, you're talking a tiny little wisp of dubbing. So this dubbing noodle that I'm gonna wrap my body with is gonna be really, really tight. There's not gonna be a lot of loose material floating around. And to be honest with you, with stoneflies, you know, stoneflies aren't as buggy looking anyway. You know, if you see a live stonefly floating down the water, um, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't appear the way a mayfly nymph does. It, it's really dumpy and stocky. There's not a lot of stuff flying around. So, you know, you kind of want a tighter body anyway. So we're going to get that on there. I need a little bit more material. got all kinds of stuff going on in the background. I got my dog rolling around groaning and it's unbelievably hot right now here in New York. So I got an air conditioner cranking. I'm hoping that's not affecting the audio quality, but the alternative is doing this video in my finished attic with no air conditioning when it's a hundred degrees outside. And that is just not happening. Uh, there's my dog again. All right, so we'll finish this up like a little bit of a taper, but again, with a stonefly, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to stop my dubbed body with a little bit of a gap there. And then we're going to take my, my rib, and we're going to do some nice tight wraps. Everything is tight, 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 mashing that dubbing right down. Trust me, it'll look more than buggy enough Grab all that in there oh i forgot to mention this is uh awesome possum golden stone nymph dubbing that's on there it's what i use for all of my golden stones i buy it you know 10 packs at a time and that's what i do all of it with okay so there's all that. That's what we're looking at so far. Next, what I want to do is I've got this, I got this cinnamon tip turkey tail here. And I'm going to get a chunk off of that. And that's going to be my wing case. Now, when I tie my regular stoneflies, you might have seen some of my other posts with, you know, the way I tie my, my, my regular goldens. I usually do the multiple wing cases. I don't do that with this. And the reason why is, again, with a Euronymph, you want, you want simple, sleek, you want you know less material. You, you just want to create as much of an imitation as you possibly can while maximizing your sink rate and, and not adding extra materials and things that are going to increase your water resistance and slow your sink rate. So you don't want any of that stuff. So if, if I did the triple wing case... You know, there's dubbing in between each section and all that kind of stuff. And I don't really want any of that. I want to just, I want as minimal as possible, making sure that I'm not creating a situation where I want a fast sinking Euro fly and I end up with something that just sinks gradually. That's not what you want. This fly plummets. And even though we skimped on some things with the wing cases, trust me, I, it, it is an unbelievable fish catcher. All right, next thing to go on, and this is where you have a choice of, of how you want to do this. I've done this with biot legs the way that I tie my regular nymphs, but what I've been doing lately is I'm taking these, this Montana Fly Company centipede legs, uh, speckled tan in size small. What I also do for my smaller versions is I bump it down to the mini, so I buy both of these sizes. For this fly on a size 10, I'm going to use the small. So I'm going to take a chunk of the rubber legs. I'm going to get that tied in right dead in the middle of that spot where I don't have any dubbing. Okay, three wraps. I'm going to snip the part that's folded over. And I'm going to pull these down and lock them into place. few more wraps just to make sure they're not going to go anywhere. So now that we've wrapped back and secured that, I'm going to work my way back up with a dubbed 
noodle. So I'm going to put a little bit of dubbing on here again. And again, nothing crazy. No, we're not getting super buggy here. I want all of my dubbing nice and tight. And, and believe me, when you see it wet, it, it's you're not going to lose anything. So we'll get wrapped there. Let's make our way up. Make everything's where we want it to be. And then now that I'm at this part right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the bare thread. See how I'm out of dubbing? And I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to jump it over and see how I crossed from here over to that next gap in between the beads. So now what I'm going to do is now that I'm there, whoop, drop my scissors, this gap right here, I want to fill that in a little bit. And what I'm going to fill it in with is just simple thread wraps. So I'm really just going to go and go and go and go and just fill that in as much as I possibly can. And again, the reason why I do that is because if I didn't fill that in with thread, the alternative would be to fill it in with dubbing. And what does dubbing do? Creates resistance. It doesn't sink as fast. So I want to minimize that as much as possible. So what I'll do now before I add that last little tuft of dubbing, I'm going to bring my wing case up over the top. Get that secured down. Nice and tight, One, two. however many wraps you think you need. Get a couple in front. And then get that excess off of there. Now again, like I said, I could have done all that with dubbing, but that it really just defeats the purpose. Here, if you want, to be honest with you, you can, you can whip finish and be done. But I do like to cover up that last little bit of thread with a really, really small, light bit of dubbing. And you can really see how, you know, I'm, I'm just, there's such little dubbing going on. A lot of, I watch a lot of videos and one of the things that I see, and, I, and I'm not knocking it, this is something that I've done a lot when I was first starting getting into tying. It's really, really easy to overdub, really easy. I mean, every, every time I apply dubbing, I, you can barely see it. I mean, that's how much I'm putting on. You know, it, it's, it's not a lot. And, and when you're tying Euro flies, I'm telling you, it makes a, makes a big, big difference. So I'm just going to cover my thread. And then even though there's still a little bit of dubbing on there, to help lock that in, I'm going to start my whip finish. So three wraps. Get that. And, you, and when you squeeze that, that thread will sink right down in underneath that slotted bead. I'm going to give another whip finish. That's pretty much it. Now, if you want, whoop, that ain't good. You know, I'll add a little bonus coverage here. So if your thread breaks, which does happen, here's how I fix that. I'm going to take that tag in, and I'm going to run my thread up there so it's doubled up. And then I'm just going to start my thread as if I'm starting a new fly. I'll get that around a couple of times. Then I'll pull that forward, wrap behind it to kind of re-secure that. Tie that off, or cut that off. Now again, I know this isn't really doing much because of when it broke, but I figured if it broke, might as well add it onto the video. That way you can kind of see how I fix when your thread breaks, because that does happen. Get a little wood finish in there, now we're all good. You can add head cement if you want. I, I stopped using head cement years ago. I, I found that it doesn't really add durability. Um, the only time I ever really use head cement nowadays is if I uh, just want to kind of gloss up my head a little bit. So the last step before we're out of here is obviously the, uh, the rubber legs here are completely untamed. We're going to grab these. We're going to even them out, give them a snip. Grab the front ones, move those forward, grab them so you can snip them evenly. Whoops, the second part of it didn't cut. Cut those to your liking. Now snip a little bit more off that. Yeah, see now it's a little shorter than I wanted it, but it doesn't really matter. You guys can cut it to whatever length you like. And that's pretty much it. Very easy, very quick fly to tie. 
unbelievably effective. I mean, I, I can't even tell you the amount of fish I've caught on this fly this year. Um, it's It's been my primary fly. I've been tying them and tying them, tying them. I, I don't even know how many of them I have right now. I just continue to tie them because um, it, it's, you know, as far as an anchor fly goes, it's, you just, you just can't beat it. it it's something that uh, I, I'm in shock at it, at how productive it is. Um, I've been tying them nonstop. I, here's a, here's a gigantic handful of them that I've been doing in the last day or so. Most of the ones in that group are size 10s, but for smaller streams and smaller fish, there's a, a size 14 there, much smaller with the mini legs on it. Um, but again, this is a very easy fly to tie, unbelievable fish catcher. It really, really plummets. Some of the key things are though, is make sure that you keep your dubbing tight. Uh, make sure that you do all those little things to kind of help the sink rate. You'll be surprised how much of an, of an impact it has. Um, if you're using really buggy dubbing, you'll throw it in the water and you'll see how it kind of just flutters down to the bottom. You don't want that. When you have that small, um, that small range of a drift, you want to make sure that fly gets down and gets down fast. And one of the best ways to do that is not only weight, but making sure that your materials are something that aren't going to create water resistance and that thing will just plummet right to the bottom. Okay. Very, very simple fly to tie. Have fun with it. Go nuts with it. It'll catch you a lot of fish.